Oh, it's a story you seek? Well then, take a seat and listen close. For the tale I offer is one where past and present collide. Where one man's decree causes a ripple in time that will soon become a tsunami. And a handful of unfortunate souls must sink or swim under the current it will leave behind. This is the tale of Crinier's folly and the ragtag bunch who must correct it before it's too late. So, welcome everyone who on people's various streams and my recording to the continuation of our second D&D campaign. First on my YouTube channel, because I couldn't keep up with the last ones. I'm home more now. Uh, last we left off, you all had been asked... You find a sage named Mr. Brydove, who you needed the assistance of to lift a curse on a town, causing a bunch of issues. With crops and not growing and animals getting sick, things of that nature. Basically bad times for a farming town. Oh yes, and you know, there was also that whole, your airship was knocked out of the sky by a red dragon. Uh, and one of you tried to jump for some ungodly reason. We're not sure why that happened. Uh, why ever it was, it did happen. And you were recovered by a familiar to most of the players behind the character's fa uh, face. And actually to all the characters, because you started in the city where this person's most famous. A now more priestly... Uh, Leonid's hair foot uh, helped heal, I believe it was Luca's decimated in arm. Uh, then you figured out you needed to help with this other problem. You went to the, spl the, spl the Splendor of Knowledge. The, quite frankly, the candle keep of this area uh, in my world. And got trapped in a extra dimensional plane. Um, no one ever wants to see a book again. And you eventually got out. Unfortunately, you discovered when you got out that uh, Mr. Brydove, who left ahead of you, to go check in with his people after he'd been stuck in there for some time, not knowing how to get out, uh, was killed. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, which brings us to current issue at hand. Oh no. You no longer have a sage to help you uh, save this place. You also discovered that the home, the, like, the magical mansion in the wall you were stuck in, Seem to belong to some pretty high, pretty high level spellcasters. Uh, their names I forgot to get because I was trying to plan for this while half watching the videos, while doing stuff with my wife tonight and some friends. Uh, so I can only really watch the, here and there to plan while on my smoke breaks, because uh, otherwise we were, you know, doing stuff. Um, so I got enough. I got Brydov's name, but I can't remember the other people's. I do know the librarian that you're about to talk to to start. Uh, is named Anathia. Uh, but before we get to that, the immediate aftermath, which I may have kind of gone over last session. Again, I didn't get to listen to it in, in as much detail as I should have. But more or less, um, you find him dead. Uh, and a couple of the many magic users in the library um, quickly dispatch of the imp he thought was just a statue, so he took it with him, and when he left it, 
disenchanted and turned out to be a real imp that was turned into a statue. Uh, and it killed him. The imp is disposed of by the time you get out. Um, but now you have to figure out your next move. You know, there is some... Not as much panic as there would be if, you know, an imp or any kind, any kind of devil or demon, you know, got loose in, like, a town. It's a magic-filled library. They just kind of dealt with it, but they are like, what the hell's happening? So after the immediate aftermath... <coughs> excuse me. Um, and Anthea, the librarian, comes to you. And is like, well... Looks like you guys have a few options for what I understand you are here for. You can look for a new sage of equal abilities. Uh, you could, depending what your abilities are, try to strengthen yourself enough to solve the problem. Or try to figure out how to get enough money together to have them revived. Well, does he deserve to be revived? I mean, he died really in a kind of dumb way. I mean, he's saying dumb people deserve to die. Him? Could have happened to any yeah. of us. Oh, well, maybe sometimes. It's yeah, a cycle. I mean, at least someone actually died. I mean, he died. He in judgment. And I mean, died. he died from a sneak attack from something he didn't know wasn't a statue. Which is why Reynolds said he died from a lapse in judgment. Exactly. Yeah. It's not every day that statues actually turn into people or things, as it were. But then again, the from where he got it from, maybe he should have known to be more careful. I mean, he didn't really go in. I mean, he was stuck he in a room behind the library. Anything. <laughs> there are a lot of sages here with that kind of power. Do they just walk the streets? Can we go knock on someone's door and just find someone? <laughs> Uh, you would have to travel a fair distance. Of course. Dang it. Huh. Fair distance Can we fast forward? like a few days worth. Uh, probably, yeah. Can we skip time? Can you what? Can we skip time? Just, just like fast forward, like, okay, we travel um, there. Yeah, let's waste some precious days looking for a sage. Fast so, travel. Um... Question for you, Mr. Young Wizard. Do you know the ninth level magic spell Time Stop? Or Teleport? Or anything that would speed up no. or slow down time? Nope. Then good luck. Uh, I can well. help you arrange a couple of horses in a cart. That might be a little faster. Might cut down from like, you know, a 10 day to 5 days. What about airships? I mean, we came here on one. Is there one of there and back? You see that? Like, we could afford that. You are in a hurry, right? To. Like, um, not on a time crunch, are we? <clears throat> I mean, the town's not gonna, like, Either. go from semi withered to all the way withered in. Like a day, but you know, livestock's gonna start dropping dead pretty soon, uh, which is kind of their livelihood. And horses will be <laughs> scarce. Be quick, but don't panic, is what so. they're trying to say. I yeah. know which horse I would, I would, I would say. Panic. Panic. That's a good way to put it, uh, Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Um, also, uh, as for the airship question, um, do any of you know? Uh, this is an Athia in character, just to clarify, because it could also be a question as a DM, but it is in character. Uh, do any of you know, like, yes, there's a lot of magic in this region, and people are familiar with it, but it doesn't mean everyone has access to it. Do you know what happens when the general populace uh, sees, oh, look, there's adventurers on that airship, and, uh, and now it's been blown up? We shouldn't be letting adventures on airships. Yeah, the rest of the captains are... Been... You're going to have to earn your way back onto those, is what I'm saying. Oh, great. Hmm. Okay. When did that happen? Um, 
you literally had your airship blown out of the air while you were getting here. I mean, it wasn't on purpose. No, you're a bad omen, is what I'm saying. Yeah. You're bad okay, luck. That's right. okay. I am a black cat. So from but that's good sounds, luck in some places. Like, yeah. It's it's pretty unrealistic that we could. Well, depending mm -hmm. on what spells we could use to solve the issue on our own, I don't think it's very realistic for one of us to be able to train in time to solve that, unless we could find a certain item that could cast such magic instead. Yeah. I feel like it would be the fastest route to just search for another sage, in my opinion. Does anyone else have any ideas? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really uh, nice to that guy yet. Before you even ask, by the way, Shirley, no, you cannot lay anything on fire. You can't burn down the village. I totally wasn't going to do that yet. <laughs> no, that sounds like something she would do already. I can smell I would, the pyromania off of I you. would strongly, strongly advise against that. I don't want to be banned. You could tell my secrets, all right. all right. So, all in favor of finding a sage and hoping that they don't bring an imp from another world this time. Say I can be a can he I. be a fire mage sage? Oh my. <laughs> we don't need another pyromancer on our team. If I cleaved your head That's from your shoulders, from you might be able to think a little better. This coming from Steve. What's wrong with fire mages? So rude. Well, <laughs> we don't need you burning down the entire village and getting banned. Yeah, There's okay. nothing wrong with this. Mm, okay. And Athie is just like, there's nothing wrong with being a mage who prefers to use fire elements. The problem is, you have to know when to use them. I never said I was gonna do it. Okay. That was the, Steve. The answer to save our village is not burn it down. Yes, yeah, Steve. Gosh, so mean. <laughs> I'm taking that as a group consensus that we find another sage, though. Yeah, where are those horses yeah. you were talking about? Those, um, yeah. those seem there lovely. There is not eating the horses yet? I feel it's only fair. I can get you the horses. Before you commit to a 10-day outside the city, which can be quite dangerous, and you are going to have to leave the city either way, um, if you go about two days outside of the city and up a bit uh, you may find either another sage or someone who can revive your sage well that just seems even better just to give you all of your options now including the mountain climb it will probably still be about four to five days but that's about the same speed it would be with horses to get from here to the next city anyway and both are about equally dangerous. As long as you make sure you have climbing gear when you leave. Good point. Both great ideas. Yeah. And we're sure that there's no other sages in this city, correct? Uh, I don't know. I don't really leave the library all that often. Uh, I'm sure there are, whether or not they're... Strong okay. enough to do what you need done is a different question. Well, I don't mind a bit of adventure. Go see some sights. You could just keep an eye out on the way out of the city. Because it is a rather large place. I agree with this. Well, uh, we yeah. probably should keep our eyes out. We don't know if we'll pass the city or not. It's a very likely way. We won't realize it. And ask everyone on the street. Just to be safe, of course. Is there don't, a, don't actually do that. That's sarcasm. Is there a common point in the city where a lot of magical peoples gather? You're standing in it. Okay, that's fair. That is that's actually fair. Well, this is the largest. This is both physically and physically building wise because giants, uh, and also. Materials wise, the largest magical library on the planet, as far as I know. Impressive. Yeah. Yes. Well, 
we could ask around here or we could just book it and go to either upwards towards sage or cleric or just to the next town oh well, looking, looking around here can't take more than an hour if not just a hour so i think we could just ask around a bit before we leave you, but like you hey. walk fast do you you do realize like, you're in a city built for giants i was talking about the library but oh i mean it is still fairly large there's four or five floors with books lining pretty much and people lining every nook and cranny and it's giant sized so the floors are quite large but you could probably do the building in a in an hour or two sounds like a good start yeah it yeah. can't hurt I mean, if they were strong enough to help us, we probably would have heard of them, right? Mm, not everyone wants to be heard. That's a, very, that's a very good point. Not everyone who is skilled in any kind of, well, for your purposes, adventuring arts, essentially, fighting, you know, druidic magic, that sort of thing. Not all of them actually, you know, want attention. They do it because it's part of their culture or they just want to be able to protect themselves and others when needed. So it's very possible you may find one strong enough. Well, it's, not, it's worth a try. Be willing to help us is the real question. Hmm? Only one way to find out. All right. So, some and with may, that, yeah. Some may be open to helping you just because they're good people. Some may want payment to, or a favor of some kind, but I'm sure you'll find someone. All right. Well, so everybody's just going to walk out of the conversation and go looking for people and talking. Uh, yeah. Same with Reynold. Reynold's just going to start ascending the, oh. the floors and like so. checking each one, unless so. we all want to do like a split up job. Just Which, for uh, just for the purpose of my note notes that I actually decided to. Keep. Uh, if you end up needing to do some, something beyond the library to find or find or fix uh, your current or new sage, uh, do you guys have a plan B of those other options decided on? Um, my, I don't have a plan B, but plan C is magical items. No, like what I'm asking is, did you do, if, if you have to go to the mountain or the city, did you decide oh, what you're doing? Right, that. Probably the uh, mountain, just because there's a shorter distance. Well, well, shorter on a A to B thing. Well, it, it takes less time. That's what I mean. It takes less yeah, time to get to the base of the mountain, at least. Yeah. So Who knows where it goes from there. there. After that, it depends on how effective your climbing is. Uh, anywho, we all have great experience with mountains, so might as well continue. <laughs> mm -hmm. cool. I just wanted to have that there in case it comes up, and it may not because I'm actually going to have you guys roll to see what you find. Uh, I was about to say, would investigation oh, yeah. so, uh, assist in this? Um, so here's what we're going to do. Caroline, how do you want to help? All right. Well, I'm just, I was just going to go look around for someone that's uh, got the same interests as me that looks like they know about magic. So you're looking for a fire mage? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, we'll come back to you then. Uh, Luca, how do you wish to assist? Um, like, are you... Well, like, for example, what I thought... Sure, Charlene might say, depending on which side of her character and abilities and just sort of role play and whatever she might go with, uh, she could have, even though Tabaxi aren't necessarily officially like at people in the sense of like certain advantages mechanically or whatever, sometimes people will lean into the cat side of their cat person and be like, I'm going to sniff for them. 
uh, to like for a certain aura or something, you know? So like, what do you want to do as far as like, are you just oh. going to go up and talk to people? Do you want to use like a spell of some kind to try to detect a certain kind of magic? Like, what do you want to do? Like, do I smell smoke? Singed to close? Um, I don't know. Can you just come back to me? Okay. Reynold, how, what are you doing? I am going the, uh, not technically, uh, when I, how do I word it? Not technically play, because I would be interrupting people, but yes, I'm going to be asking around on the various floors. Okay. Uh, Steve, you know how you would be assisting with trying to find someone who can help you? Uh, probably just the same as Reynold. Okay. Zarevir, what are you doing? Same thing, just talking to people, seeing what they know. Okay. Um, Luca, do you have any ideas? Uh, I probably, yeah, I was just gonna say, probably just going asking around. Okay. Same as uh, so, Charlene, I'll come back to you because you specific, had a more specific thing you were looking for. And it also has nothing to do with what everybody else is looking for. Uh, which is completely fine. Uh, it just means I'm going to wait to come uh, to do yours. Um, so I'll just go in chat order then. Uh, Luca, roll me. Uh, are you... Are you going up to someone just mid conversation and butting in, or are you actually trying to find someone who's like finished the convert, like available to talk to? Luca would find somebody who's not talking. Okay. Uh, so, in that case, uh, you find a probably late middle aged human fellow, probably about 50 to 60. Uh, looks like he's studying. You can see him looking up and around. He gives you a smile. Like, he's, you're, it doesn't seem like it seems more like he's reading. Yes, he enjoys it clearly because he's in the world's largest library and he's probably in some into magic to a degree. But he seems like mostly he's just reading to pass the time, less so than like specifically engaged in it. It's just a thing to do to keep himself busy. So he seems open to you coming over. Oh, hello there. You're a new one to the. Uh, I haven't seen you here before. Uh, yeah, you could say that. You see me, you see he's giving, like, squinting, but not in that, like, older man who's having trouble seeing, like, he's, he's squinting, like, he's thinking or trying to remember something, he's like, were you on the airship that crashed? Yeah. It was Black and purple, hey, black and purple, hey, are you the maniac that jumped off? I didn't jump off. Cause I heard you jumped. I didn't jump off. Well, anyway, I'm glad you survived. Thank you. How um, can I help you? Do you know of any how uh, any mages on the scale of? Um, I already forgot his name. Uh, Bride of. Bride of. Do you any? Do you any? Do you know any mages on the scale Neo O more powerful than Bride of? Um, I know who you're talking about. I'm just trying to think. You know what? I think I did hear about one. You won't find him in the in the library, unfortunately. Dang. Yeah, they're in. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they hang out up in that big mountain or a couple days east of here. Oh, I. Um. um other than that, closest you can get would probably be. Myself or someone about my level, and I'm not quite strong enough to do what they need. What sounds like you need. Mm. I could. I mean, I'm close enough. I could try, but it would be less of a guarantee it would work if I tried it. Okay. Uh, well, 
Thank you. Um, no I'll problem. Have to talk to my people here. But yeah, uh, thank you. And no then, problem. Try not to get, try not to jump off more, any more airships, would you? I. Yeah. Yeah. He I'm, just sort of chuckles and goes back to his book as you leave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope we like travel like across continents and people are still talking about that. It's <laughs> <No, laughs> no. the only thing you're known for. <laughs> I agree for that. God, I hope not. Uh, Luca right. the Leaper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give me a second. It was like before, before we continue, just go over Ooh. here to the notes section. Luca the Leaper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love making God, up titles. Um, so, uh, just going in order, other than Charlene, just going in or chat order. Reynold, you're just basically eight charismaing it up or whatever the hell your charisma is. Uh, yeah. Um, um, oh, wait. I, I have a charisma of ten. Okay, so what I'm hearing is you have no tact and you're butting into a conversation. <laughs> you will be charismaing nobody. <laughs> Not with a 10. Um, I mean, it's possible with a 10, but with a 10, I'm not assuming anything. I'm asking, how would Reynold handle it? Like, with a 10 in charisma, he's not very social. With what he's gone for, he's probably not the best of proper social etiquette when it comes to, like, big debates and that. So if he sees someone talking, he's not going to immediately assume it's a debate. Oh, I mean, it doesn't sound... You see a couple of what you assume are wizardy types uh, talking. They don't seem to be, like, arguing. They're just discussing, having a chat. They, that uh, said, they are mid-conversation. He would probably walk up to one of the groups and just politely interject and say, Mind if I butt in? Yes. Um, so you see two, fo two folks, a elven man talking to a dwarf fellow. The elven man doesn't judge you exactly, but he's just kind of quiet. Like maybe he doesn't talk much to people he doesn't already know. Uh, and has an ex or has an excuse to talk to. The dwarf, on the other hand, <clears throat> is like, "Hi, what do you want?" Yes. I was wondering if you were aware of any sages about the same strength of. Oh, I forgot their name too. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I hear you say it, and it's just like, it's was it great? Bite off. Thanks. Uh, uh, bride of. Aye. What you want them for? There is a village in need of magical, great need of magical services, and it only has a few days until it might reach some sort of dreadful end. Ah. Well then. You'll be wanting to head up that mountain over there. I mean, you might find someone here, but if there if there's someone here that strong enough for that, I've never encountered them. I see. Thank you for your wisdom. No problem. Also, one more thing, Tin Man. Excuse me. Don't interrupt the adults next time. <laughs> I cut you some slack on account of you don't look like you belong here. Reynold is. Making a mental note of this dwarf. <laughs> Gonna find out where this dwarf lives, his family, <laughs> his children. <laughs> yeah, really me, uh, uh, do you obviously you're not saying this out loud, but are you like do it do it doing any kind of gesture like eyeing him up or anything that is like apparent you're looking at him funny? A little bit. I'm hoping the helmet kind of helps in them it not noticing as much, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, I'm remembering this one. So you... Roll me a... He's on the petty grudge list. Are we gonna fight? 
It's not a perfect one for. Oh, there's not gonna be a fight. I would. I unless it would in, in a big major hub city that I set up for you guys to be able to come rest in and stuff. I would. I might do a fight, but it would be like last time where it was like you pretty much know you're fighting something yeah. when you get there. Um, yeah. Major the cities. Way, major cities. I typically don't f fuck around with unless it is like a big high point of the story. Um, that said, roll, the closest thing I can think of for this is roll me a deception check. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, with that kind of rolling, you might break out in a fight. <laughs> so you, you don't realize it at, right away, but after four, five or ten seconds, you realize you've stopped dead when he said that and clearly are, like, looking him up and down without even really realizing it. And he just looks at you and goes... Try it. I <laughs> dare you. Fight, fight. Oh, not today. Maybe, I don't know, some other week. I say with a slight jest in my tone, but also saying, yeah, I did take a bit of offense to your words. <laughs> and he just shakes his head and looks at the door or the elf and just mutters something in a language you probably don't speak. Yeah, probably don't. What do I'm you gonna... speak? Oh, just common dracon, dr blah blah blah, common draconic and infernal. Yeah, no. Uh, you yeah, because you know infernal, I'd say you sort of slightly know it in the sense that it like it has very loose. Like it's probably also from like the hells on or under dark or some awful place. Uh, but it does not sound sound like infernal. It just sort of, a f you know, like French and Spanish have like so uh, have some like words that are kinda <laughs> close. Uh, yeah. bec because they all started in like, Europe based off of like ancient languages. So there's like yeah, the Latin based. Like yeah, Latin is what I was looking mm -hmm. for. But so they're all kind of Latin based, yeah. but then they split into their own variations. It's kind of like that, where it's like. There's some syllables and maybe even a word or two you can kind of half make out, but it's definitely a very different language. Thanks. What language are um, you referencing? Uh, abyssal. Oh, oh yeah, that's okay. I, yeah, I, was, I was thinking I yeah, assumed. abyssal. I just didn't want to say it because I didn't I want to say it. I wish I was there. Um, Honestly. So, I might be quite uh, heard of it. Steve, would you like to approach someone as well? Probably uh, not. Just gonna just Steve's just going to join yeah. like a reading circle because he's a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Steve's going to see like, right. a snack stand and just like get totally sidetracked. Um, Zarabir, uh, I know you yeah, definitely he's, he's wanted wizard. to contribute. Of course. I got, I'm got. i a charisma guy. Am I, I'm, I have to contribute. I, he's Zarvir's mm -hmm. gonna find like the biggest group of people or at least the most intelligent group of people he sees. And just try to like insert himself into the conversation. Um, and uh, he, he's gonna try to do it as as politely as possible. Uh, just so you see, sort of like a, a semicircle of people sitting at a like round, like a big round table. They seem to all be sitting on the same side. Uh. And seem to be jawing back and forth with each other. Oh, they're actually kind of all around the table. It's sort of like a conference table. And then... You... You see something weird? Uh, the head of the table... Stands up. The person to his right stands up. And she just looks up at this much taller individual uh, as this human, or humanoid anyway, you're still like 30-40 feet away, it's hard to tell if it's a human an elf. Definitely the taller, slender end of medium-sized um, looks up at what you can now see is probably uh, roll me a history check. A history? 
just to get a couple rolls in since we're doing a pretty a pretty good amount of actual just role playing tonight. Get a couple dice mm-hmm. rolls in there. Hey, not bad. Uh, sixteen's plenty. Um, it is a cloud giant. Um, the biggest, oh, wow. as far as I know, of giants. Um, certainly in most sort of giant realms in other like official D and D books, they tend to be the most potent ones. I mean, the ones at the top of the ordinance in like the Forgotten Realms giants. Um, if memory serves. Either Cloud Giant, Storm Giants, something like that. I forget what they're exact. I think it's them anyway. They're surely one of the bigger ones. Um, and she just looks up at him, and you can hear it. Like, she's not yelling, but it's, you know, kind of an echoey stone chamber. So then she's not trying to be quiet. She just, for some reason, looks up at him and goes, sticks her hands up and, like, flicks them. Not snaps, but, like, open and closes her hand. Almost like if you were making... The motion of like talking with your hand but sort of like a like a little kid would do to say i want something and just holds her hands up and just goes uppies <laughs> and he and the cloud giant oh. sort of chuckles and just goes and just lets out a big uh, okay he just grabs her by the <laughs> scruff of the neck like cl- <laughs> on her clothes like not like between oh some fingers and just hoists her up on his shoulder and then she proceeds to uh let me double check something actually so i make because one part of this is going to sort of involve dnd actual mechanical spell related stuff so i want to make sure i do this right uh and you see her you've seen this before it's not it's a pretty common thing typically Clerics use it, although she looks more wizard roby. You figure she's probably dabbled in a faith of some kind. Um, as she, it seems to still be her wand, uh, but you notice there's, as you're getting closer, there's some kind of carving in the wand. Um, it's a little bit bigger than normal wand, not quite a staff. It's still handheld, but it's. A little bit thicker than your average like wand. It's almost like a, if you turned it around, it'd be like about the size of like a, uh, like a night stick. Uh, it's a weirdly big for a focus, but it seems to be what she's using. She just puts it under her chin, round, kind of points it at her own throat, and then proceeds. To, uh, actually, no, she doesn't, because she does uh, doesn't need to actually do that. I just realized I read the spell component wrong. Uh, so she, but she kind of does it for show, almost like she's tapping her vocal cords. And then she quite loudly, uh, and by quite loudly, I mean a very loudly, uh, probably about triple the volume. Uh, she goes, children, back to class. And the rest of the table that you notice are a lot younger than her. Get up and walk down the hall somewhere. Seems there, while it's not a formal school exactly, that there is some sort of school-like program in this giant library. Um, You get the sense she was drawing attention to herself to make sure they listened. (coughs) And then she climbs down. um, And the giant heads back with them to, with the kids. And she sees you sort of approaching. And she goes, "Yes." Oh well, didn't know they had school programs here. Uh, yes, if you're gifted enough. Your uh, students are well, talented in the magical ways, I presume. Um, you could say that. Are talented in hmm. many ways that are obviously magical. Some of them are, I don't know if magical is quite the right word, but special. Hmm. It's or something. But uh, I don't come to you for that. I'm more just on the lookouts for someone with 
said such special magical abilities. Someone like our, our dead friend over there, I'm sure you heard the chaos that appeared from the screaming. Oh yes, I helped deal with the imp problem. Yeah, the one who was on the unfortunate side of that. Uh, me and my uh, companions, uh, whatever they are, we, we needed him. Uh, we're looking for someone like him. Uh, well, you may find someone in the next city to the east, uh, depending on if they're home or not. If they're home, you'll find the same person at the top of the mountain to the east as well. Hmm. No one local. Uh, not particularly. Mm. They, uh, oh. It's not that we don't have anyone strong enough to do what those kind of sages are doing. It's more so that they're dabbling into modifying things that the rest of us can do to a smaller scale to increase the scale they can do it at. Unique way to approach it, I guess. Yes, and for the times that it works for them, um, it's great. The testing, as you can imagine, if you're at all magically inclined, can be a bit messy when it doesn't work. Um, depending what they're trying to expand. So that's why they tend to live in places like the top of a mountain where there's you know, plateaus that they can have lots of open air to try things without too much risk of anything major happening. Makes sense. Um, in that case, do you know of any faster travel there? Anyone with maybe enough coin could get us there magically? Uh, I could. I can see what I can do. Stay in town for the night. I assume you're staying, planning to stay at the Triad. Is that where we're staying? I don't actually remember. I don't remember if you ever technically decided because you weren't expecting to be stuck in that other house for that long. Um, yeah. Technically, now that you know the code words to get both in and out, you could also just stay in the house in the wall. It seems to be permanent. Well, that place creeps Servier out. I don't think he'd want to. Uh, but otherwise, if you're looking to stay more on the physical plane, the triad seems to be the main inn in town. There are some other smaller ones that have opened as more people of different sizes, giant and otherwise, moved in, but that's certainly the most famous one. Hmm. Uh, well, yes, yeah, that's where we'll be staying. I'm sure we'll be there in the morning if you, if you can find anything. Excellent. I will uh, come see you in the morning, then. Um, one last thing. Hmm? Uh, this is a fairly magical city. Do any of you... I'm sure there's artifacts all over the place. Anyone know a way to track some of those artifacts if someone's looking for something? Possibly. What are you looking for? Um, that's, that's, that's an interesting, hmm. um, Zervir would pull out from his little bag this, this book. It's mostly empty, except for a few pages, and he'll rip out one of the pages, and it'll be... Uh, a picture of this weirdly almost dice-shaped artifact um, <clears throat> that it's very roughly drawn. Um, Zarvir's no artist, but he'll just um, hand that to her. She looks at it rather intensely for a moment um, and then goes... Uh, I know of a couple of them in existence. Do you know of where? Or uh, where I could start? The last time I heard of one coming up was about 25 years ago. Someone claimed oh. to have found it and they claimed they were going to do research on it, and then it disappeared. You know their name? Uh, you just sort of see her uh, when she says what she said about the research. 
you know she's talking about you. Gotcha. Okay. You were the last person, or at least your group was the last person known to have had one of these in their possession. <coughs> well, uh, you've not heard of it anywhere else? I kn- I've heard that there might be more than one in existence. I have not heard of one in one or more of them since then, no. Well, thank you, I suppose. If you hear anything, send for me, I suppose. It's of it's the most important thing that I find that. It's more important than most of us can imagine. It certainly seems to be very important to you, yes. Yes, it has. With that, Sarver would very politely just walk away. Excellent. Um, she didn't give a name, and neither did you in our talking, but we'll just assume by the yeah, they eventually did so that you would have a way to find each other. Um, yeah. I just sort of, we were far enough into the conversation, I didn't bother doubling back for it. Charlene, I did not forget about you. You were looking for another fire wielder, yes? I think Charlene may have passed away. Oh yeah, I'm still really tedious search. Watching for them. Uh give me a perception check. I put in the other in the wrong channel. It's eighteen. Eighteen. Uh after about um two or three minutes of kind of sniffing and looking around. Uh your nose is pretty attuned not even just your cat side, but literally just your pyromancing side. Uh, is pretty attuned to sniffing out flames and you sense that there is someone uh, you find a big set of stairs that seem to go down multiple floors and you figure somewhere down there is what you're looking for all right i'm gonna go i'm going straight to it so you're on about the fourth floor at this point you go down all the way past the main floor actually and this is one of the sets of stairs that actually goes down to the basement. Um, or in a house-sized building, it would be a basement. It's an under uh, basement floor, basically. And uh, hmm. sure enough, you see what looks like a big, pretty open area. It looks like this is probably where like students and other magic users try magic of a level that's safe to do indoors for the first time a testing ground as it were and you see somebody who seems to be flinging uh some small uh like hand fist sized bolts of fire at a target uh and then you see him put point his right hand uh at over to his right side about 50 60 feet in this giant, like, 200-foot wide space. And, uh, there's about seven or eight targets in a 30 or 40-foot circle, and he just blows them all up with a fireball. Oh, that sounds amazing, actually. I want in on that. Shoot. Um, you say that out loud? Yes. <laughs> uh, so the person turns to you. And uh, when they turn, you see their face is burned on on the left-hand side. They had their right side facing towards you. But it does not look like a burn of flame. It looks like probably a chemical or acid burn of some kind. That's not as cool. Um, Accidents happen. Other than that, uh, they're still recognizable to you. It seems that they, uh, from the stories you've heard about them, it seems they may have, it is possible either for, you know, fighting classes or wizard types, or in your case, and this person's case, druid types, 
uh, just sort of break from one circle and train under another. It seems this person is currently doing much the same kind of stuff that you are. Uh, but even with some burns on one side of their face, you do recognize them. Uh, and you know that's not what they used to do. Uh, they used to be of a different circle. They seem to have taken the time to refocus their druidic abilities. Um, but aside from the burn on the left side, half of the face, they look like this. Or added to that. <gasps> Hold on. <laughs> yes. Mm, they just sort of look over at you. They're like, Hello. Oh, that's so cool. I've heard stories about you. I like your style. You see him pause for a second? <laughs> and not like, not so much at your, at your words. Like, yes, at your words, but not like <laughs> he's surprised to be recognized. I mean, he's not surprised. Um, he's, it's almost like he thinks he recognizes you. He's just like, and you see him kind of shake it off. He's like, ah. he's like, can't be. <laughs> uh, hello, uh, I'm Robo. Pleased to meet you. Meowdy, <laughs> how you doing? Uh, I'm feeling like de I'm currently I'm feeling like I'm having like I'm having a bit of deja vu. Some deja vu. Yes, you look an awful lot like someone that I used to see a lot. Oh yeah, there are some interest in uh, black cats around. I'm 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 their biggest fan. Uh, that would be Raina. Yes, yes it would. Right. Yes, it would indeed. Uh, yeah. You don't give off the same kind of vibes, though. What is your name, dear? Um, yeah. I'm Charlene. Uh, they call me Charlie for short. And uh, what brings you to this fine establishment? Ah, uh, well, we're in a bit of a spot trouble. We're looking for uh, some some uh, strong mage friends that can help us out. There's danger coming. You know, the usual. We gotta be the good guys and save the day. The town. You, I mean, you've seen the town, right? I think You've I know which issue. town. I I've heard of it. Yeah, they they've been they've been uh, sending out calls for help, and and it's been falling on deaf ears. They're uh, they're gonna lose their livelihoods faster than a sh uh, two shakes of a lamb's tail. Did you say it's falling on deaf ears? No one's helping them. That's alarming. They're not going. They're not going to make it. That is very alarming indeed. It might be something to do with uh, people that accidentally burn things and aren't the most credible. After we um, have been involved in certain uh, exploding airship accidents. No, it's it's more than more than that. Oh, okay, it's... good. I don't feel so bad now. Um, it's <laughs> troubling to me because I know someone who was supposed to have already gone and dealt with that. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's dead, we're in a lot bigger trouble than I thought. I mean, it wasn't related. It was kind of a, a freak accident. The place he'd like to stay was a bit dangerous, and he took a little uh, souvenir that happened to not be so inert, and that's what got him. One of those impish things. You know how it is. These things what happen. What are you talking about? <laughs> Wasn't that uh, the guy that died? Our Bright of guy? Bright of is capable of that, but that's not who I was talking about. Uh, well, Charlene's confused. I, w I was... Hmm... I don't like this. 
Give me 15 minutes to have a nap and look at my spell list. Wow, wait, is Robo real? Wow, that's, I swear I just heard Robo's voice. That's exactly <laughs> what he would say. Fantastic. Wow. Uh, no. Uh... <sighs> like, this isn't normally something in my wheelhouse, but I do know someone whose wheelhouse it is who is in town right now. Planning to meet up with them later anyway. We'll see if I can uh, get them to help help with this. Uh, for now, um, <laughs> take this and allow us to keep in touch. And Gnome shuffles over and plops a red stone in your hand. I'll call you when I have every, when I have everything in order. Probably be tomorrow morning. Oh, excellent. They're, my friends will be happy to hear about this. Um, in the meantime, can you do me a favor? But of course. Can you deliver this for me? He gives you a letter with an address written on it. Oh, give me something to do. Excellent. I will see you. I will, you will hear from me tomorrow. All right. Anything for the robo? Um, you, I mean, uh, I, yeah, I suppose you could actually open it, but do you want to at least see where you're delivering this thing? I guess I'd be better than wander around aimlessly. Uh, so the <laughs> delivery address, uh, I'm not going to bother spelling out the street address. It's not important. <clears throat> but you know the location that it's going to. You've been there already. Uh, the name, the, hmm. del the name on the delivery address is Brother Leonid's Harefoot. Oh well, that's easy. Um, so, you take that back to your room. Uh, for the purposes of this, um. Unless you guys really want to do five minutes of telling each other what you just, as players, heard was going on. We can just say you filled each other in when you came back. Uh, it's None of it is that important. I mean, yes, it's important, to, like, but it's like, it's not worth role-playing it when I can just say, yeah, filled each other in on that stuff. Because if you even want to pretend to be a team, you should be telling each other that stuff. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. if there's anything that you for some reason don't want included let me know but otherwise I'm going to assume all the important as a group stuff you at least share with each other I'm an open book like the stuff that you know to succeed as a team you should probably know is what I'm getting at uh, like locations mm -hmm. and names and things of that nature um, I ain't hiding anything so, as everyone par had parts at the inn and goes to your respective rooms for the night, um, Reynold, as a reborn, you don't really need to sleep per se, but mechanically in D and D, you still have to sort of rest. I just, I saw kind of like rest for like the same amount of time. Or, um, actually, I think it's only. Four no, I think it might be it's six. I think for a reborn, or is that a warforged? One of the two. Uh, racial traits, deathless. You know, you don't need to sleep, but I can finish a long rest in four hours if I spend those hours in an active, motionless state during which I retain consciousness. Yeah. So, for the purposes of this, um. Whether you're conscious for it or not doesn't matter, as long as you're by yourself in the place you're going to rest, essentially. <coughs> Is reading the, uh, hold on, let me read it. The Book of Martial Techniques on a Chain constitute still enough for a long rest? Um, yes, except that halfway through, you get interrupted. Oh. 
Uh, and you... Are you sitting down to read? Are you sort of walking the room like some people like to read while they're while standing and pacing? Well, I'd have to be sitting in order for it to constitute as a long rest, because I no, still have to be... You can... Well, yeah, I guess it says motionless for yours. Usually for a, long, okay. for a regular person's long rest, they can do, like, light activities, like, as long as you're just, li like, you can't walk, like, an adventuring pace, but you could, like, you know, pace in your tent for a while or whatever. But anyway, doesn't matter. Um, I was just curious for flavor. Um, but yeah, about two hours in, you... The book in your hand uh, flat changes... Uh, and you see a flash of a face and you sort of blink and try to shake it off and then you see it again and you so slam the face. we'll get to that and then you okay. so once you've had enough of it you just close the book you're like this you know maybe this is magically you know it was attached to a magic fucking bookcase maybe there's something weird about it it's cursed or something who knows then you look up across at the reading table you're at across from you, or the dining table. And you see the face again attached to a body, and you don't... N you recognize it. You don't remember where from. All you do know... It's, you can't remember why you know the face. All you know is you remember the face and you remember that based on your memory of the face, it's impossible that that face is in front of you. Hmm. And I'm guessing from how you described it, I don't have a name to the face, do I? No. Yeah. Uh, like I said, your memory is very foggy as a reborn. Slowly, sometimes things come back. For some reborn, it never comes back. Some remember more than others. You know you recognize the face. And you remember enough about the time you last saw the face to know that you shouldn't be seeing the face, but you don't remember whose face it is. In other words, what uh -huh. I'm saying is you're pretty sure that that person either died or went missing or something the last, but you're not you can't remember all the details you just know you recognize the face and the fact you're seeing it in this circumstance feels wrong, wrong. to you all right hmm. i don't yeah with what you're giving me it doesn't sound like i can roll history on it because that sounds like the limits of my memory for now uh for now yes that was that is an intentional i'm milking your reborn memory thing uh, nice uh, can I ask, just as like a player who's curious, um, what what is? Can you give us a description of the face, like their species? Uh, I don't know. What else? What else is important about a face? They um, have scars. I can. Um, it's tiefling face. Hmm. Uh. Details are hard to make out. Uh, it's more of a shape of a face. You just remember, like, it's almost like a shadow. But you, you haven't, um, until you met Zaravir for these new adventures, you haven't met that many tieflings in any of the past lives of yourself that you can remember from any of the times you've been awake. So there's only been a handful. You know it's not Zaravir. The outline doesn't make doesn't fit. You've only met a couple. So you're pretty sure, even though you can't put a face to the name, or even a full face, that you know you should know who this is. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's definitely weird that they're suddenly show up. Uh, like, you know enough to know when you look back, they're not there. So it's clearly like some sort of essentially you don't really sleep, but for lack of a better term, a dream. Yeah. Or a vision I... of some kind, but it's frighteningly real. Do I regard this face <laughs> hmm. would I regard this face friendly or not? Given that I don't know the true like uh 
what's the ah my lord i can't think of words tonight the right the alignment of this face i am gonna start reaching for my executioner sword like is this thing going is this thing gonna attack uh no on the contrary you get an overwhelming feeling of guilt like maybe it's someone you previously attacked Hmm. I'm gonna reach out to them if possible. Like, just kind of like see if I can touch them. Are they physical, tangible, or is this some sort of trip? Um, it doesn't seem that they're tangible. But when you look away and look back, they do reappear, and you notice that the eyes are not real, but like there's not really a non-meta way to explain this. Basically, the eyes look more like a 3D illusion. Essentially, that's they seem to be scrying on you, whoever they are, and that's the image when you notice it, because it's invisible-ish, but for story reasons, I'm letting you see it. Possibly they want you to see it. Essentially, instead of like a floating little orb thing like they describe, a lot of DMs describe, I'm saying it's appearing as a pair of eyes on the shadow. I see. But you, even though you're more of a martial person, the bits and pieces of memories you have of previous, like, armies and being in this, you know, library, you know there is magic that somebody could be looking through those eyes at you with an actual spell. And probably are. I'm gonna just... Uh, is there anything it seems I can do to maybe, like, cover the eyes or just... Uh, no, but they, after another five or ten minutes, they seem to disappear. And they don't return that night. I'm just, well, the next two hours, in that case, are going to be dedicated to pondering about what the fuck was that in character. Uh, so, next morning. <clears throat> you all awaken and meet up as planned down in the tavern area and uh, a couple of people call you or visit you <coughs> one of them is the lady that uh, I believe was the lady who offered to help you guys figure out your next move um, but as she's starting to enter you see her get stop and you see her kind of mouthing something it seems like maybe she's you guys are familiar some of you at least are familiar enough with magic even if it's magic you can't do yet to know what a sending spell is uh they're not that uncommon um you know third level magic is not every wizard not every tom dick and harry that ca knows how to do a cantra a cantra per first level spell gets that high but they're common enough in a ma heavily magical fantasy world. You know what a sending spell is. Uh, and you can see she stops like she's talk getting one of those and responding to it. And she actually turns and doesn't even come to see you. Um, and, and you find out a minute or two the reason for that. Uh, when your sending stone goes off, Charlene. I'm, I'm going to have to answer that. Um, Did I tell everyone else about it already? Oh, yeah, I assumed anything important like that you would have. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so they knew. I'd start going. Does it, do I know where to go? Or do I just answer it? Like, oh, yeah, phone? you just sort of put it, basically put it to your ear like a phone is the way I always envision it for an easy real world example. And just sort of talking to it. This, uh -huh. What's the skinny? Uh, she's on her way. She'll be there in five. Oh, and I better get my pants on then. I would hope you have pants on. You're in the tavern right <laughs> now. Well, things happen, you know. You drink too much. Yeah, but you weren't in it the tavern like... when you fell asleep. I say you're drinking and... at like eight in the morning. Let's see. Uh, don't you? <clears throat> You know what? To each their own. You know, maybe I'm just right. missing out on that. So, yeah, look where we live. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, a few minutes later, uh, Robos 
companion that they that he promised arrives. They look absolutely head to toe pristine. You can't imagine even you, Steve, who's a wizard and knows that there are wizards and a couple of other magic users who can magically clean clothes cannot imagine clothes ever being this clean looking. Wow. Jesus. They are just it's almost like there's an aura of like you know there's a like that you whether you know it or not, you know that wizards and a couple other arcane casters can do what's called prestidigitation, where you can just snap dirt off of things. And magically basically make it look like new. This doesn't look like brand new clothes. It literally almost looks like there's a, some kind of aura of magic preventing, pre-preventing the clothes getting dirty. It's weird. Um, it's There is actually pretty much literally a just very faint shit person shaped glow around them that you figure is how they look so pristine. I was gonna joke about that saying like it's so pristine it's literally like reflecting light into our eyes and blinding us. No, but they do seem to have a light gold aura around them. That uses us out too much and also like in armor. Uh yes they are as a matter of fact. That's so um, weird. They are. Let me see what they are adorned in. Probably some like big chunky metal. I mean, clearly they're wearing like bright white robes as well, but. Hmm. Okay, they did. Uh, so yeah, they're wearing. Spectacularly shiny silver and gold uh, plate armor. The, wo the woman uh, looks to you and goes, Are you Charlene? He got me. It seems I have found the right group then. 